I'm Ryan Canyol. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Petricor, uh, and I'm going to give uh, my talk today. It's called Make Mom Proud, releasing a featured uh, App Store game. Um, so first off, I'm, I'm actually I'm really excited to be able to speak here because I it wasn't that long ago. I'm not too far removed from when I first came here, and this was a, a really huge deal uh, to be able to just come and pitch. Um, so to actually be able to speak not too soon after is really awesome. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, so a little bit about me first. I graduated Becker College in 2015. Um, and then following that, uh, once we graduated, we decided to start Petricor. And I started it with the team here in front of me. Um, we all graduated together. Um, and that, now I'm the CEO and producer at Petricor. Um, so I'm originally from Swansea, Massachusetts, about an hour away. And then I moved to Worcester to go to school. And, and we decided to start the company here. Um, so some of my favorite games. Uh, Civilization, Mass Effect, uh, Elder Scrolls, uh, like simulations and, and role-playing games and things like that. And that's a picture of me jamming an ice cream cone pop into my mouth because we, our publisher gave us them after we launched an ice cream game. Um, so, uh, so that you can know a little bit more about me and who you're listening to, uh, it's usually two truths and a lie. I wanted to make it a little bit harder. Um, so I'm going to name four things and I'm going to ask who uh, ask what you think is the lie. Uh, three years ago, I won a lobster eating contest. I love hiking in the woods. I wrote and starred in a play. Or I spent five years working with kids. So uh, by a show of hands, who thinks uh, I'm lying about the first one? Uh, the second one? The third one? And the fourth one? Okay, well good, I guess I was, I, I did a good job, Harvard. so I was lying about the first one. Uh, I never won a lobster eating contest, I hate seafood and I think lobsters are the bugs of the sea. Um, so I do love hiking in the woods, I did write and star in a play, I was a detective, and I did spend five years working with kids, it was a camp for kids with diabetes. Um, so, before I talk, um, I'd like to think that I'm smart, I'm not. Um, and so uh, these are all my own opinions and experiences from starting uh, Petricor. Um, they'll probably be different than you. It's uh, similar to what Seth was saying. Um, and again, it might not fit you what I'm saying. And so a part of that, and this is going to be extremely shocking. Uh, so I'm a white middle class man. I'll let, give you all a moment to let that settle in. Um, and so uh, what I mean by that is that uh, it, it's been easier for me to do a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about than it will be for you if you're not that. And so I think it's important to keep in mind that before I discuss success and talk about some of the great things that we've done, it, it's going to be harder for you if you're not that. Um, and so I think it's important to at least acknowledge that um, and let you know that if you aren't, and you want to do something like this, I'm happy to help you out in any way. Um, so what's a feature? Uh, so a feature is uh, the front page of the store. Um, so you're on the front page of whatever store Steam does features. We release mobile games, so I'm going to talk about mobile features. Um, that's our first game, My Niara, right there on the front of the uh, store. So it gives this huge boost to visibility because you're on the front page of the store for a week. Everybody who opens up their phone sees your game. And it leads to many great things. Uh, these are the effects of a feature. So you can see we released our game Gelato Flicker, and right at the start there, right after we released, uh, we had the feature, and we had this huge spike in downloads. These are downloads um, where we've got tens of thousands of people coming into the game the first week of launch, and then following that. Um, but even in the middle there, even at like December 27th, there was like 200 and something installs that day. It just looks really small in comparison to. Um, to the, the spike of the feature. And that's all great, but <laughs> what do I love? Um, so features are great, players are great, but what, um, what do I love more than anything? Well, that's money. Um, so features and players are great, but um, you need money. And it's important for money because you use money to buy things. You use money to buy fancy dinners and, and big cars and big houses, and even if none of those things appeal to you, you're going to need money to buy and feed cats. <laughs> and we live in a capitalist society, so if any, any weird thing that pops into your mind that you want to buy, you're going to need money to buy it. So 
How does that relate to games, though? Um, because uh, something that you need to keep in mind whenever you're releasing a game is video games is a business. Um, you need to understand that the game that you want to release needs to make enough money to fund the cost of making that game and to fund the cost of building the next game that you want to make after that game. And you need to think about the money um, when you're developing the game. It's great to have whether it's going to be fun, whether people will like it, but if it doesn't make any money, you know, er everyone's going to have to leave once you're done. Um, so think of your favorite game, whatever you think is the best, most shiny example of like what all games should be like, and how much money did it make. Um, if you don't really know how much money it made, you should look into it and try to find out whether or not the game was really successful, because just because it's a great game doesn't mean that it made a lot of money. And so my own experience with this, uh, at Petricor we did four releases, technically. Um, uh, I refer to each store as a different release. We released two games, but on four stores. Uh, Mine Arrow was the first game that we launched. We did Android and iOS simultaneously. And then we did Gelato Flicker as our second game. We did iOS first, and then we did an Android launch following that. Uh, three out of the four of them have been featured on the front page of their respective stores. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how those, how those went. So Mine the Arrow, that was our first game. And uh, Mine the Arrow, it's a matching puzzle game with a literal twist if you haven't played it. Um, and so we started development on that in April and May of 2015. And so following that, we released it in July of 2015. We wanted to keep development really short on it. And we knew we wanted a small, like, bite size as our first game to release as a company. And so we did, like I said, iOS and Android simultaneously at first. And the, we got a front page feature for both. iOS was first. Um, we, we learned about that the day after we launched. And then following that uh, on Android, it was about two or three weeks following that we got featured on Android as well. Um, and that led cumulatively to about like 215,000 uh, plus downloads on that game. Um, so we were, it was the first game that we'd ever released to the team. We were, we were really happy that uh, it did as well as it did. Um, so following that, and I'm fast forwarding, uh, we worked on Gelato Flicker next. Gelato Flicker is a fast-paced matching game where you serve up gelato to hungry customers. And uh, we started that in uh, June slash July 2015, so right before Mind the Arrow was shipping. Uh, we kind of had a lull where we were getting it ready, and we started planning out the second game. And we released that in November 2015. Um, and so, like I said, we did iOS first, and then following that we did an Android launch. And uh, uh, as soon as we launched, we uh, also got an iOS front page feature again. This was a little bit delayed because we released right before Thanksgiving and the store was kind of wonky, but um, we got the feature again, which was awesome. And this led to 172,000 plus downloads for Gelato Flicker in total. We didn't end up getting uh, the Android feature because of the delayed launch, um, but even without the downloads, Gelato Flicker's done better in Mind the Arrow than, than pretty much every way, um, which was what we were trying to do, so that was awesome. And that's, so that's awesome. I told you about us, but now how can you get your own game featured? And uh, my answer to that is I don't know. Um, <laughs> So I don't know, but you should try this. These are some of the things that we did. Um, so things that you should do. Um, make sure it's a fun game and polished. It, it, this just kind of makes sense, but uh, uh, Apple's not going to put you on the front page of the store if it's crap. Um, and so uh, you know, make sure that there's a nice, um, even if it's a smaller game, you know, if it's a small game that you know is a lot of fun, you can polish it, you can make it really nice, and then you have a pretty strong chance of getting a feature. Um, the best practices for that platform. So this is, um, each store has what they want. Um, like Seth brought up, um, Apple came to him with, they wanted uh, something to be put in, and you usually say yes to Apple, we'll do whatever you want. Um, so that, um, that will be the same thing. Like for us, uh, Apple has Game Center that they want put in. Google wants Google Play Games put in. Apple doesn't want Google Play Games in. Google doesn't want Apple in, so like you have to have two different versions and make sure that you're doing what they want and the best practices for that platform you're following. Um, talk to Apple and Google, so if they don't know your game exists, um, they're, they're not going to know that you know to take a look to feature it. Um, so that's something that you can do on your own. You can find the people that, uh, that, that run the stores and try to reach out to them, uh, or you can work with a publisher. They'll handle that for you. They already have that pre-existing relationship there. Um, 
a social media push, so I don't know how much this helps, but we've done it every time that we've released a game, and it's resulted in the feature, so um, it can't hurt. Uh, we reach out to everyone that we know when we're releasing a game and say, hey, we're releasing it, do you mind posting about it, sharing it, doing whatever? Um, and that's, uh, you know, we, we've, we've had um, many people in the room have helped us with that. Um, and so uh, that's something that, that, that can help um, boost awareness. There's no way to be certain, though. So uh, I've talked to people who, like, run companies that put millions of dollars into a mobile game, and Apple and Google don't tell you that they're going to feature you. They never let you know that it's going to happen. You find out that you're going to be featured at 3 p.m. when you go check the store and see that your game's on the front. Um, and so it's cool because when this happens, it's a very nice surprise. But it's also very scary because you're betting a lot that um, if it doesn't get featured, it sinks to the bottom of the store and nothing really happens with it. Um, so there's really no way to be 100% certain. These are just things that you can do to kind of weigh it in your favor. Um, advice is always free. Uh, so bring your game around to as many events as you can. You're all here right now, so it's a, uh, an awesome start. Uh, and show it off to as many people as you can. Get them to take a look and, and see what they think. Um, share it wherever you can. Um, so share it online, share it at events, share it to whoever. Get everybody to play, get everyone to criticize it, get everyone to let you know what they think. Uh, talk to other developers. Um, so I've been amazed uh, the amount of people who are probably extremely busy and have way more important things to do than talk to me, but I can send them an email or bug them at any time and they're willing to talk and look at the game. Um, there are a lot of people out there who are super helpful and are willing to, uh, are willing to do whatever they can to help you. And if you have, uh, as an absolute last resort, if no one's willing to talk to you, if uh, you've got no one better to go to, you can come talk to me. Um, and the last important part is you don't have to take the advice, but it, I, it's really important that you just listen and hear it. So a mistake that I made when we first got started, we got a ton of advice from someone, and uh, it was on the first game that we were going to launch. And so they gave us this huge like list of feedback and things that we needed to change. And I saw it, and I was like, no way in hell are we going to change all this? We don't have enough time. Um, and so instead of learning a little bit more about why they felt the way that they felt and being asking questions, why do you think that we should change this? Why do you think we should change that? I was quick to be like, no, we're not going to do that. And then instead of you know, learning about it, we could have still ignored all the advice, but I think that it's important that you at least kind of understand where someone's trying to come from and, and know exactly what, what their thinking was behind it. Um, set clear goals. So start small and scope well. That's like the, all the games that we release, we try to start really small. Um, and. Uh, build something that we know that we can build as a team realistically. Um, make sure that you set dates. Um, so even if you're probably not certain that you'll hit that date, as long as there's a date, as long as there's something that you're working towards, um, that number has a huge impact on actually wanting to release it. And the most important thing is ship it. Um, make sure that if you're working on something, you ship your game. I'll say it again, ship it. Uh, make sure that you ship your game. Ship it. Ship your freaking game. Uh, don't keep working on it forever. Get it out. Make it happen. Um, and then if it doesn't go well, make another one. Um, and then finally, you can consider a publisher. Um, they're going to help you out with marketing. They're going to help you out with QA and design feedback. So you're constantly sending them bills. They're constantly telling you what you should try. Um, in some cases, they'll provide funding. That's a little bit harder to do, but it's um, you can get money from them on like a milestone basis for delivering them um, bills of the game. Um, they'll take a percentage of your money. They want to be a partner in it. They're going to take um, a large percentage of the money. Um, but what I, what I always go back to, there's a lot of people who are very adverse to using a publisher or like they don't want to give up creative control. They don't want to like share any of the project with them. but. The question is, do you want 50% of something or 100% of nothing? And so um, if, if you don't want to work with a publisher, it's fine. Sometimes it's good to go through the, the steps of actually you know, releasing it on your own. But they can help you out a lot. Um, and even if, you know, even if it you know, goes really well with a publisher and you think that you're losing out on a lot of money, you've got to think about would that have actually happened if we hadn't have gotten their help. Or you can always be really lucky, really rich, or really well-connected. Um, those also help a lot. Um, 
three very unlikely things as a student slash reaching graduate. Um, so those are probably all out of the question. Um, and so this is all great, uh, but don't forget about the most important rule. Uh, is it gonna make money? How much money is it gonna make? So um, talking about, and this is something that I don't think most uh, like good thinking companies would do, but guess how much money, uh, so I told you about like our games and like the games that we released and how many downloads we've gotten and all these like, you know, all these awesome statistics about it. So how much money do you think uh, our games have made? Like a million dollars, half a million dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, like, uh, you know, how, how, how much money do you think that uh, our games have made? Uh, okay, so, no, uh, no it has not made 50,000, let me show, I'm going to actually show you how much money our games have made. So, so we released Mind the Arrow, you can see the downloads there, this is from Map Annie. So Mind the Arrow with 152,000 people has made $2,450 on iOS, and on Android it's made $1,229.77. So, you're probably like, that's a lot of people and that's not a lot of money. So then, like I said, Gelato Flicker, we released it on iOS, and it did do better than Mind the Arrow in pretty much every way. Collectively, between the two stores, Gelato Flicker's made more in total, and it's made almost double what it made on iOS. Um, so we had 172, we had more installs, but we did $4,273.60. Um, so, that sucks. Uh, it, but it's important that, um, so if you're wondering how we exist as a company, uh, well, I'll get to it, but um, making games is hard, making money is harder. Um, so uh, making, game, making a good game is a really hard feat to pull off. Making a lot of money off a good game is an even harder thing to do. We do a lot of work for hire. Um, as a company, we worked on a bunch of different projects. Uh, one that we did was actually we did a project for a zoo that just got installed yesterday. Um, and that, that pays a lot better than the games, so we do that to fund the games, and that's how we exist as a company. Um, be prepared to fail. Um, so going in, um, you know, make sure that you understand that, like, uh, that you, you know, uh, I don't know what the exact number is. Like they made like 60 games before uh, Angry Birds came out. So be prepared to, you know, have several bumps in the road before you end up at a big smash hit. Um, but know where you succeed, so I would not call Gelato Flicker or Mind the Arrow failures in any way other than the fact that they didn't make money. Um, we wanted to release a game that had a huge push behind it, we got a lot of installs. It's really helped us as like to become known, um, and just shipping two games in a year is a pretty good feat in and of itself. Um, and the other thing is that uh, you can do it. Sunglasses guinea pig believes in you. Um, if we can, you can. So um, there's a, a lot of very talented people in this room, probably some that are way more talented than us. Um, if we can do it, uh, you can do it. Um, you're a lot more talented than you know. I've seen like a ton of student projects that I think like, wow, they would blow us out of the water if like, uh, like there's some really, really awesome stuff that like people are doing and you might not necessarily think that it's as great as it is, but I mean, it's, uh, you're all doing really cool stuff. Um, obviously, it takes a lot of hard work to, to get to that point. Like, you, you gotta really like put in dedication um, to make it a reality. Um, you wanna try to learn as much as you can. So like, um, through the process, understand that like bad stuff that happens, uh, there's something that you can learn from that happening. Um, and finally, you can make mom proud. Um, so, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> she's proud of me. Uh, so, um, that's my email, uh, my Twitter, uh, we're PetraGoring. Um, our website's PetraGoreGames.com. I don't know if I have any time for questions. I do. Okay. So, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Uh, so the question is, how do you kind of like balance the time between school and work and games? Um, so we're uh, so we're we graduated, um, but when we were starting the company, we were still in school. Um, I mean, we'd meet at nights usually. Um, it was just a matter of uh, you know we we knew this was something that we wanted to do, so we put in time at nights. Um, uh, 
balancing time, um, you kind of sometimes you you have to give up fun at first to make uh, to make what you want to happen. Um, like when we were first starting, I'd go to events like many nights out of the week, and I, I don't really like going to events that much. So um, that you know, you, usually you kind of just have to give up time that you'd otherwise be enjoying yourself to make you know make this happen. Yes. Do you potentially have any advice for students here that are going to grad school? Um, well, uh, you know, I, I'd say maybe don't. Um, no. Uh, so uh, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a good way either way. I think having, like, experience, so, like, I, I think, so I, uh, there's an advisor that uh, we have as a company who's a professor at Clark, and he teaches business classes there. And like we, uh, I've been doing this for almost a year now. And he was joking, saying like you've gotten an MBA, you're, you've gotten an MBA out of doing running a business just by doing it. So I think that you can learn a lot by just doing something. Um, but uh, for going to grad school, I guess, you know, continue to like learn as much as you can from it. I, I'd use that time to build things, play around, still like, ex like experiment with different, you know, weird things that might, um, might not pan out because you kind of have that like cushion to still fall on and fail. Yes? So I guess uh, going up to the last talk, how do you guys decide uh, like what your next project is going to be? Um, so it's like, Flashing into mobile games, but like at the start, you said you know you're also passionate about all these other types of games. Yeah. Um, so usually, I mean, we'll talk about it a lot. We'll meet. Um, usually, we'll we do this thing, although not as recently as of late. But we 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 called it like the Petricor Powwow. But like we would every other Friday for like two hours, we'd meet and like. Uh, usually I'd come up with like some weird crazy prompt. One that I liked that we did was I went onto a news site <laughs> and found random articles where the headlines had to be really strange. And then I'd just read the headline of the article and tell people that they had to make a game off of that. Um, so like we, we came up with games that way. Other like we've tried a bunch of different things because we've only been in existence for a year. So like, each time we try to come up with a game, we try something different. I think that's been, you know, kind of good for us. Um, you know, Oliver's our lead designer. Uh, he comes up with a lot of the game ideas, so he'd be a good person to talk to about that. <laughs> yes. Um, so you started writing school. Can you perhaps like go into the process of like, like uh, acquiring early funding if you did, or was it mostly like self-funded? Uh, so for uh, the question was uh, for raising funding when you first get started. Um, so, like I said, we did work for hire. Um, we, when we first got started, we were really fortunate. Uh, we talk, we were in talks with Mass Digi, and Monty's an advisor for us and really helpful. And he put us in contact with someone who was looking to have an app developed. So we portioned some of our time away from game development in order to build the app for money, and then. What you do is when you charge out for contract work, you bill out at a rate higher than you're paying everyone else on the team so that the people who are working on the contract work can fund the people who are developing the game. And so, and little secret, uh, <laughs> so that that way you can continue to fund what you're doing. Um, and so that's, that's how we've raised funding. Another thing that we did, and I consider this raising funding, is we went back to Becker and reached out to them um, we, I, should, I, I met with President Johnson, I showed him everything that we'd done and was like, hey, this is what we're doing as a company, this is what we want to do as a company. And to make all this possible, if we had space, that would be the best thing ever. Um, I found this space, it would be great if we could go there. Um, and so he was like, okay, we'll pay for it. So we have like a really nice office space that we're in that's been free for nine months. Um, I actually just talked to him recently and he's going to keep paying for it. Um, and so uh, I just talk to them and it happened and you know that's several thousand dollars in funding that they've provided to us um, so just like reaching out and talking to people sharing what you're doing that that's a great way to do it too but work for hires how we've done it yes um, I get that question I never have a good answer for like what the hardest um, so 
I, I guess I can't think of something that like I call the hardest part. Like, um, you know, like when we first got started, it was a pretty huge time investment. It was something that like none of us had ever done it before. I I took one business class at Becker. Like, run it. Like, you make so many mistakes. So like, if you're someone who like every time that a mistake gets made, you get really upset about it. It might not be the right path to go down. Um, but I think like the the making a lot of mistakes, like screwing things up. The like one mistake we made was uh, a client that we were working with. We did, I didn't really like sh give an understanding of what. So like as a game developer, we'll be like it's an alpha, and like we know that means that it's full of bugs and it looks like crap. But to someone else, they don't know what alpha means. So it's uh, yeah, it's an alpha. Okay, and then you send them the build, and it's got bugs and it doesn't look that nice. And then you get a very, very long email where they're very upset with the product that you've just delivered to them. And then you spend that night uh, calling Monty frantically on the phone and trying to figure out a way to respond to them. Um, and so like stuff like that I think was challenging because I'd never done anything like that before. Um, but it all works out in the end. Yes? Oh, where's the name from? Someone always asks that. I, 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 I'm glad that I never put it on. Um, so Petricor, um, we got the name. Uh, we're having a meeting. We're trying to decide what to call ourselves, and we were just throwing random words up on the board. Oliver was looking through a list of uh, 50 most beautiful world words. 50 most beautiful words, and one of them was Petricor, not spelled the way that we spell it. And that uh, it's the word that describes the smell after a rainstorm, so like that nice wet earthy smell. And so I wrote it on the board, but I can't spell. And so I spelled it P E T R I C O R E. It's P E T R I C H O R. I think is the right way. And so we looked at it though, and we we're like, that looks nice. That looks like a tech company. That looks official. And so that's why we used it. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, so, yeah, so the question was about finding like a, a trustworthy team, um, and so I was really lucky that I worked with everybody that was a part of the team for you know, a year plus before we got started, so I knew that they were like the most talented people that I knew, and like I wanted to work with all of them, so that's why I reached out and was like, let's start a company together. Um, and. Uh, so I, you know, like make sure that. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk to people, and like there isn't really like legal agreements in place. Um, the company isn't set up. It's not really like it's iffy, like what happens. Um, and so it's important that you make sure that that's all really clear and outlined. Who owns what? Um, things like that, because otherwise, if you know, if it can start to get messy, that's where people start to get upset. And then you know, be fair in talking to people, and you know, like determining what what that will be. All right, I think that's it. So, thank you.